Good morning. It is good morning. Shh. A chihuahua may come. Good morning, everyone. Oh, hang on. Here he is. I'll have a quick sip. And um, I literally haven't long been up. There he is. I'll come back to you. Hang on. I literally haven't long been up, but it's never too early, of course, for a glass of champagne. But the reason I'm with a hat on, I'm very scruffy, is because I'm doing a dish. It takes the longest dish I've ever cooked on my life. I'm doing one dish that I love, oxtail. Wow. Now, oxtail takes about five hours. So what I thought I'd do is I'd get up, get it all underway, put it in the oven, then go and relax and watch the TV and come back, hopefully in a better state. But the most important thing is get this thing underway. So what have I got? It's probably easy if I had it up. Oxtails, of course. And it's a stew. Oxtail is a stew, but it needs lots and lots of cooking. So I've got a little trick here for you as well. Hang on, because I'm doing stories. So I have to keep turning it on and off because Donnie is out down at home sense at the moment. What a shock. So there are my two beautiful little bouquet garnets. They get dropped in a bit later and then don't leave like loads of string on because you don't want string hanging around in there. So now we start the process and the very first thing we've got to do, I like to flour, in season flour, the oxtails and then we're gonna sear them off do you like the tree? <laughs> then we're going to sear them off and we just get that crispness and that brownness and we keep the juices in and then that flour adds to the sauce. You remember we've done that with our beef bourguignon. We also did it with our Lancashire hot pot and I'm sure loads of other things that we've done. Oxtails. Oxtails are going in, dusting, make sure they're just dusted with flour. We want to, we want to sear them now. So you're gonna, we're gonna get them. You can see them just going in. They're just starting to go. Now, oxtails are exactly what they say they are. They are the tail of the cow, the tail of the ox. And they take ages to cook, but they have amazing flavor. And they're obviously not the most expensive cut because it's the tail. But for me, when this is cooked, the fat and the juices and the marrow bone and everything in those tails will come out and the flavor you get is just unbelievable. So I'm gonna put all these in here and I'll show you what happens in a second. So we're underway here, the oxtails are in. What I'm gonna do with those is I'm gonna transfer them from here into this pot here, which is gonna be my cooking pot. Um, I have two beautiful big um, the Crusade pot, but one's too small, one's too big. So anyway, I'm going to use this, but it doesn't really matter. And um, and I'll show you what these are, what's happening here, if I can. Now you see that's just starting to brown. So that's what we want. We want this lovely golden brown. I want that flour to just um, coat that. Now that flour will also help us with our sauce, of course. So you can start to see now how it's colouring and it looks like, the, it looks like actually, it doesn't look like beef at all, it looks like chicken, but um, the, the process here is that, don't be frightened of oxtail, people go, oh my god, oxtail, it is the most beautiful cut, it's fatty, that fatty will disappear, that fatty, that fat will disappear and you will end up with a stew like you have never had before. The bones will just part. You have the best, beautiful, tender of meat. So here we go. So here you can see the wonderful oxtail that's browned and beautiful. So that's going there. And now I just piled all of that veg, all those vegetables into this um, pan. So you've got that residue of the oxtail and, um, and you keep everything going. And then what we're going to do, we're going to add this into here. There's a lot of vegetables here. I like a lot of vegetables in my vegetable stew, uh, in my beef stew with a lot of vegetables, if that makes sense. And actually, I'm just going to tell you what else I'm going to do with it. There's two other things, by the way. You've got some red wine here, which we're going to put into here. And you've also got some beef stock here, and you'll see it all come together. I'll show you, obviously. And be because this is 
for me and for um, Donna, although Donna's not very keen on Oxel, but anyway, we are, um, I'm doing a cauliflower here. So I'm going to make cauliflower cheese. And you may have remembered a little while ago, I did um, um, from a Cl uh, Clodagh McKenna's recipe, I did a jacket potato and I take out the middle and I put a cauliflower cheese in the middle of it. And I just thought that would go really well. Mashed potato goes brilliantly with this, of course. But I just thought I'm going to do this because it was so nice. I've got my potato, I've got my cauliflower cheese, it's going to be there, and then I've got my beef bourguignon here. I've got beef bourguignon. I'm getting everything mixed up. I've got my oxtail there, and it should go really well together. The other thing as well is, um, the other good thing about this particular dish, it takes so long, you've got plenty of time to have a drink, even though it's very early in the morning. I mean, if you want to get this for lunch, you've got to get up at seven. Well, we're going to have a late lunch. But the other really important thing is that these dishes I've been cooking recently, minestrone soup, chicken soup, Lancashire hot pot, beef bourguignon, these real big winter dishes of goulash is gonna come. These are really good value dishes. And they like, you know, you get the whole of that oxo was nine pounds. All of that oxo was nine pounds. And so there's going to be what, five portions, that's, you know, a couple of pounds of portion, plus just vegetables and some jacket potatoes. It's a really, really good value dish. Okay, back to here. So my vegetables are really cooking out now. I don't want to overcook them, of course, because they've got hours to cook. So we're just getting that color in. We're just giving them a little bit of caramelization and we want to soak up that wonderful residue of the oxtail. Um, so I'm gonna give those a couple more minutes, then I'm gonna put them on top. And then, because I've got quite a lot going on here, I'm just gonna do some beef stock with my tomato puree and my wine, and I'm gonna soak up anything else I've got left in there. So now it's time for the garlic. Remember, we don't want garlic in too early. I'm gonna put quite a lot of garlic in this dish, because I think I think it's got, it, this is gonna be just full, full of flavor. Um, we want the garlic in now. It's gonna have plenty of time to cook out. Of course, we've got loads and loads of time in this dish. You can see how everything is just, just browning, but without any real sense of burning or color. We don't want any, any um, of that you know, that burning, well, you, if you crisp onions in a pan, you have the really juicy ones in the cat, and then you have the one go, oh, that was a bit burnt. <laughs> we don't want that. So I've now put some vegetables in the pot because I've got a lot of vegetables, okay? And the other vegetables are here in the pan. I'm gonna just get that to a really good heat um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna add in here some tomato paste. I like the idea of quite a bit of tomato paste because it will give us great, great cut in our oxtail. Um, so let's get that going. And then we're gonna put a good glug. Whatever your glug is, <laughs> you want a red wine. My glug will be, well, my glug will be that much. Now you can hear it beautifully start to take away that fat and it will burn off all of that wonderful flavour. So now here we have massive, masses of flavour. And in here I have a beef stock, which is actually, I haven't made the beef stock, but you can see it's a fantastic beef stock. It's thick, it's gorgeous, and that is going to cover exactly the amount I want. That's great. I'm just going to put a dash of water in there as well because it's actually, I want to just cover the whole lot. Bearing in mind we've got a lot of cooking to do here. Uh, and now, and now I want to make sure that all just seeps in. And if you can see this, I have to tell you that that is, you know when you go to one of those art galleries? One of those. 
and you see beautiful, beautiful paintings. That is a picture. Christmas in the uh, Dazzle and Donny house. We've got Christmas music on. I've got a Guinness. Look at these. Wow. Look at the state of that. I know, I know, but you can't look at my Christmas tree though. Look. Look at my Christmas tree. We're underway here. This is a, this is a, look, this is a work of art. Trouble is, Donnie keeps eating all of them. <laughs> oh, well, that's hot. <laughs> Come on, Daddy. So, well, the first thing, first lesson is to not pick up the. Okay, so I've just taken this out of the oven. It's amazing. Um, we're five, by the way, darling, it's actually five and a half hours since we put this in. So, look, when you come, can I, can I just see? So, if you just do this, look, get a ladle, and you just want to take some of the fat off, because oxtail has a lot of fat. So if you just do that, and you'll see that you can put that in there, mm -hmm. and you just go round, just dip a ladle in like that. Doesn't matter if you get a bit of the um, bit of the other sauce, but you just take the fat off the top. See how the fat goes in. Press it down. By the way, this oxtail is quite honestly amazing at the moment. So I'll just carry on doing that. And I've got my wonderful potatoes and cauliflowers in. Shall I show everybody? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if we look in here, there are my, wow. I, I've shown, I, I, I sort of did a few shots, but that's cauliflower cheese in a jacket potato that's been scooped out. Double carbs. We're not worrying about carbs. We're Christmas. not worrying about carbs. Alrighty, so we'll come back and we're going to serve our oxtail in a moment. Okay. So these are my beautiful cauliflower bakes. Oh. They're based in a little uh, a, a jacket potato. Mm -hmm. And here is the marathon. Marathon. Wow. The marathon, marathon event, but it's worth waiting for. Let me just take out this. So, look at that. Oh, now, steamy. you put that in there. Yeah. And let's get another one. You can see how it's just falling off the bone. That one there. This is an event of cooking, let me tell you. I'm just going to put that on there. Nice thing to do on a Sunday, baby. Wow. Let's put that over here. The boys are barking at them. Now you can see the way, you can see that bone there. And that is okay. What you have, when we have oxtail, you have a separate um, plate to just take the bones because the meat will just drop off this. That is, I think we better let the boys in. Right. And I'll just finish off. Okay. So this for me is, Donny, about, oh, I just want to, sorry, I'm gonna put a little bit of that on around there. Because it's so traditionally, and then I think I have a sprig of parsley on there. I know it's all very, very traditional, but for me, that is, that is food. That doesn't get much better than that. It's a bit of a marathon, <laughs> six hours it's taken, by the way. I left it really low, 150, and then I turned it up a bit. Look, cheers, everybody. I'm now out of my hat. I'm into just some sort of casual wear. <laughs> casual. <laughs> Lots of love. Well Thank done, you. Bye-bye.